Thank you everyone for coming in person. And this is cool to see everyone together. A lot of the talks in the observability track have been virtual, unfortunately. I hope it changes, but I'm glad to get everyone together and, and showing up and meeting and talking. Uh, today I'm actually, the title's a little misleading, but this talk is going to be about Jaeger, and we're going to dig into the Jaeger operator, which is a really cool piece of technology that's part of the project. And then we're going to talk about some of the metrics work that's been going on in Jaeger. Uh, the first part of the talk about the operator, uh, Joe Elliott actually put the slides together, and he was unable to make it last minute. He's one of the maintainers as well. Uh, he's over at Grafana Labs, and he's the person responsible for Tempo, for those of you that are maybe using that. He's a, a great engineer. Sorry, he's not with us today. Uh, my name's Jonah Cowell. I'm the CTO at Logs.io. I do a lot of work on Jaeger, Open Telemetry, and OpenSearch, which is the new open source fork of Elasticsearch. Um, and I'm happy to be here. When I'm not working at the computer, or maybe playing a little video games. I spend a lot of time underwater. Uh, it's been nice in COVID because you're very isolated that way. Uh, so I do a lot of diving. That's my passion uh, for the last several years and explore a lot of cool places where I live in South Florida and all over the world. Uh, so if you want to talk diving, that's definitely another thing besides observability that I like to talk about. Um, and my company is a SaaS observability company. There are many out there. I can see many of you representing other ones. Uh, we focus on an open source based platform and Jaeger is part of our platform. Uh, so it's the same UI, the same usability with a bunch of other stuff around it. Um, and Jaeger is a, is a great CNCF project. It's been graduated for quite some time. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Jaeger, um, it's, and you're maybe using open telemetry or looking at it, the collector component of Jaeger was actually forked to create the open telemetry collector. And we're starting to bring some of that back into Jaeger, and we're essentially going to just be consuming upstream collector. And that's the plan. So Jaeger is basically a storage format and a UI and a bunch of other pieces around it in order to scale it out. But in general, we build things in a very different way. They're very componentized. Uh, it's designed to run on Kubernetes. And this is something that Uber created many years ago and open sourced, donated to CNCF. Uh, Yuri, the gentleman who created Jaeger at Uber, has a great book on distributed tracing. Many of you have probably read it. It's very helpful. Even though the examples are open tracing, they're still very similar to open telemetry. And those that are not familiar, I'll just give you a really quick rundown of what you're looking at here. This is a trace. And in the trace, there's a bunch of um, different transactions that are occurring here. So we can look at the different spans, which are each of these little segments and how much time they're taking and then we can look at the end-to-end -end trace, how much time that's taking. Are there errors? Are there other things that are going on? And you can drill down into these. There are tags that are added that show you different information. Uh, in the example here, that MySQL call, you can see the database query, how long it took, whether there were issues. So it's a really useful tool. Um, and it can take data in a lot of different ways and allow you to analyze um, the trace data. It's very focused on debugging. So when you compare it to APM tools, this is very much a tool that people use to debug problems or understand what's happening, not really monitoring as much. And I'll talk about that on the second half of the presentation when we talk about metrics, because that's really what's going to make Jaeger more of a monitoring tool and less of just a debugging tool like it is today. So the operator is a really cool piece of technology uh, that, that has been evolving a lot over the last year. Um, JP, or Jirasi, depending on how well you know him, uh, is, uh, is the gentleman responsible for this. He was previously an engineer at Red Hat. He recently joined Grafana Labs. 
and he did a lot of work on the operator, does some really cool things, and I'm gonna show you how you can use this on your laptop to do, uh, set, set up Jaeger and start using it, and even how you can use the operator to scale out and operate Kubernetes in a large distributed environment. The operator is designed to do all of those things. Uh, here's a link to it, uh, to the docs, which are also really good and comprehensive and explain everything in depth. So a lot of work went into this, and thanks to the folks at Red Hat who are big into the operator model that basically want everything to be deployed this way. I think it's the right type of uh, model to use with Kubernetes. You've heard about it a lot this week, and I think it's, uh, it's really important for the ecosystem to adopt this way of, uh, of deploying and running things. Uh, I'm definitely a fan. So uh, we're gonna go through a bunch of different pieces. How do I um, basically do uh, deployments, configuration, scale out, and even talk about agents and sampling and auto scaling. So keep in mind that some of the things that we're going over here are Jaeger specific, like the instrumentation libraries. Uh, open telemetry is gonna be the standard. Jaeger had its own libraries before but open telemetry is basically going to replace all of that. Uh, it's something that's currently being discussed. Um, a lot of people do use the Jaeger libraries in their applications, and they're still supported. We're just using OTEL in the future. Similar to people that maybe used open tracing before, open tracing is being deprecated. There's nothing new going into it. All the work is in OTEL, but that doesn't mean that the OTEL collector will not accept open tracing data. It does, and it will continue to do so. And this is the challenge with instrumentation, is that as new things come, whether we decide to replace them or not, we have to figure out what we do with that data and those formats. It's, it's tricky. So anyways, to the operator, um, basically to get up and running, uh, cube, cuddle, create, this is essentially how you get uh, a Jaeger system up and running. Uh, so a couple things to keep in mind, the logs are very useful when you're getting this up and running. Um, and also uh, it will watch specific namespaces to deploy new, uh, new instances essentially. If you leave it blank, it will deploy on every namespace or you can spe specify certain namespaces as well. Um, so it's up to you depending on how you're deploying this. If you're testing it in your test environment or on your laptop, just leave it blank and it'll deploy everywhere, essentially. Um, so uh, CRD, uh, you essentially define uh, what you want to do with Jaeger. And there are three strategies that are defined in the operator. There's all-in-one, production, and streaming. And I'm gonna explain the difference between them and you specify the strategy uh, in your resource definition, and this tells the operator what to deploy, configure, set up, and how to scale it. Um, so, so the really basic way of deploying Jaeger on your desktop, laptop, whatnot, is basically a single binary. Um, so this includes uh, the, the application, well, so, the single binary is the centerpiece, the Jaeger single binary. The other piece is around it. It needs a data store, a place to store information. And then data comes from your application, instrumented with the client, and goes to a Jaeger agent. The Jaeger agent is sometimes optional, depending on how you're setting it up. And then the single Jaeger binary includes everything that you need for the user interface, for the data ingestion, for the storage, and then a database. And I'll explain what the database is and such. This is the really simple deployment, the all-in-one version of that. The second, and you'll use this on your laptop if you wanna test it out, start playing around. The second one is production, which includes everything except for the green box, which says streaming, and I'll explain streaming after. And so what this means is now we're starting to deploy a collector, and the collector allows us to scale out the way the data ingestion comes in. 
So you can think of this as a way to uh, essentially support more Jaeger agents, more infrastructure that is sending trace data. And we're going to talk more about the backend database and about Kafka and how those work in the production mode because there are options for those. Uh, Jaeger Query is also a service that helps scale out the UI. So when you're running in production, it's a microservice that's also deployed and managed. The operator does work for all of this stuff, basically, to deploy it, to scale it, and to manage it. Uh, it's very powerful. And I'll show you some examples of how that works. So today, when you decide uh, what you're going to run Jaeger on, there are two options today in the operator. One is Elasticsearch, and the other is Cassandra. The operator will handle deploying those and being able to scale them out. So it's actually quite comprehensive what the options are. Uh, you can also point this at another cluster. If, let's say, in your organization, you've got a big Elasticsearch cluster, um, you can just point it at a URL instead of deploying that. But the operator will deploy that as well. Um, so uh, we do support OpenSearch, which is the Apache 2 version of Elasticsearch. It's not in the operator yet. It would be trivial to add it. We'll see. Right now, Red Hat hasn't decided whether they want to switch to open search just because they, they do keep things Apache 2 in their uh, code base. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, the other option is, or the other piece is, uh, is deploying Kafka. Uh, Kafka gives you the ability to deal with back pressure on the database. So anyone that's running big Elasticsearch clusters, you're already running Kafka because there's essentially no other way to scale it well. Uh, and so in the streaming strategy or configuration, it will deploy Kafka. Uh, you can use various topics as well if you want to separate and manage the data effectively. And this allows you to deal with bursts of data coming in that maybe your backend can't deal with. Kafka will queue them. The other thing that Kafka can be used for is to do some stream analysis. And there's been some nice little experimental projects that are in one of our repos in the Jaeger org of people that have built Kafka streams and Spark streaming type of analytics on the trace data. None of it's really well baked, but some of it came from Uber and other companies that do that type of analysis. Um, we built something similar in Kafka Streams that does some of our streaming analysis. We haven't open sourced all of it, but we're, we're going to do that soon. It's definitely in the plan. Uh, so Kafka is something that you're going to want to deal with if you're running a bigger cluster um, or you have other use cases there. But the operator will do that. So to give you kind of an idea of how this works, the nice thing about Jaeger is that each of the components, because it's all in Go, it's just command line arguments. So the operator is basically passing in the right command line arguments for what you're trying to deploy. So some examples here, and we can, we can specify a lot of this on the command line. This basically is an example of us deploying uh, you know, it, it essentially does all the configuration and passes the command line arguments in uh, for you by running the operator so that you don't have to deal with this all yourself, which is what happens when you run it on your own. So it's definitely uh, gives you a lot of options and makes it easily scalable in, in a Kubernetes environment. And... Uh, the other thing to note is that if you decide to pass in other command line parameters, so in this case, the example is there are, there's blurg and blarg that are basically being specified in the CRD here. And you'll notice down at the bottom when the command line is run, uh, unknown flag, blurg.blarg, it actually just passes all of those parameters in. So if you feel like passing a different parameter in to one of the Jaeger components, the operator will just essentially run that in the command line. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to do custom things on top of what the operator already supports. So the CRD just makes it really easy to manage the config and roll this out consistently. Uh, it's definitely uh, pretty powerful 
in terms of what you can do with it. So the other thing to think about is the agents. And in Jaeger, the agent is essentially something that the instrumentation talks to. So in the open telemetry uh, world, it's, it's essentially a collector. In Jaeger, we actually have two different things. We have an agent and a collector. In open telemetry, the collector can be an agent or it can be a collector. That was kind of part of the design of open telemetry was to have that same binary be flexible for both use cases. So when you decide to deploy your agent as a sidecar in the operator, what this means is that for every node that's running an application, an agent is going to go there. There's going to be centralized collector that the agents all talk to. This is one option that people use. Uh, and I'll show you the other options for, for agent deployment that the uh, operator supports. So this is one way. Uh, this way is kind of better because it's more segmented with each of the applications that you're deploying in, uh, in Kubernetes. The second way to do it is with a daemon set. This is another option where you have a single agent for multiple applications. Now, the challenge here is that you can overload the agent and you may have different teams deploying applications that would talk to a single agent and the config and, and just managing that may be difficult depending on your configuration and how your teams work. Um, and then those get sent on to a collector. So these are basically the options for uh, agent strategy deployment that are in the operator. The other interesting thing that Jaeger has, which is almost in open telemetry, I saw some actually commits go in this morning, is this idea of remote sampling. Uh, and sampling is a big area of discussion in tracing and in open telemetry. Uh, what remote sampling is, is it's actually pretty unique. It's something that they built at Uber for their specific use cases around the volume of data that they were dealing with. So today, most of the sampling happens at the collector. So the traces come in and the collector decides whether it's going to send those on to your back end. The challenge is that all of that data is still going over your network. And if your collector isn't really close to your infrastructure, that could cause other contention or cost if you're running in the cloud. With remote sampling, the instrumentation library actually is able to read a file or get a signal to change its sampling strategy in real time. And so because that's happening in the instrumentation, you can eliminate the fact that the instrumentation is even going to send trace data or not. And there's a lot of really great use cases for this. I'll give you a good hypothetical. Let's say, uh, in general, I want to get 1% of my trace data. So I'm, I'm sampling. But when there's a problem, I want to get 50% of my trace data so that I can debug better. With remote sampling, I can send a signal that says, change your sampling strategy, and then I can get more data temporarily. So this feature is really powerful. It's, it's almost in open telemetry. The challenge is that the libraries have to implement it also. So we have to go in the Go instrumentation and support remote sampling, not just the collector. So there's still work to do here. Uh, so one of the, and, and the other thing is with open telemetry is it does tail-based sampling, uh, which the Jaeger agent only does head-based sampling. So OTEL is more sophisticated for sampling strategies. Uh, here are some examples of, uh, of sampling strategies using, uh, using basically the probabilistic, which is the basic type of sampler. And you can specify different types of sampling for each service, depending on what you want to capture and what you want to discard. Um, and you can put this all in the CRD. It gets passed in uh, to the rest of the Jaeger deployment. Uh, so it's really powerful in terms of configuring everything together as a CRD, uh, which has a lot of benefits. So the other thing that the operator supports is auto-scaling and scaling the collectors and ingesters, which is really uh, useful as well. How many of the um, collectors do I want to potentially scale to? 
and you can also uh, extend this on your own and maybe use a metric for auto scaling. And I'll talk about the metrics that uh, Jaeger supports because it exposes a lot of data in Prometheus that you can scrape, and then you can use that as part of your auto scaling as well. So there's a lot of options here in the operator uh, to, to do the auto scaling for you defined once again in the same CRD, so it gives you one nice place to keep all of your config as code, uh, which is really handy. So I mentioned the storage, um, you know, that supported uh, Kafka and Elasticsearch, and monitoring Jaeger itself uh, with Prometheus is also easy. We expose a lot of metrics that you can easily scrape. Um, so a lot of folks are, are doing that, and it helps operationalize Jaeger for sure. So there's also uh, a bunch of other um, pieces that uh, the operator can do that I'm not going to dig into because they're even more advanced use cases. But here's a few example, examples of them. In Cassandra, it can create schemas. Um, there's a lot of index management and Elasticsearch where Jaeger will actually do the whole lifecycle management of indices for you. Um, and then there's all kinds of other things that, uh, you know, that this can do. And of course, OpenShift support, that's the main reason that Red Hat contributed all the work into the operator, because uh, they're big into that. Um, and there's lots of things that you can do with this operator as well. So it's it's worth checking out, it's worth using, even if you're just starting to play with Jaeger on your machine. Uh, it's definitely a good way to do that, and it helps you see the power of operators, because I think that's the future, and if you listen to the keynotes, that's clearly kind of where the foundation is taking things, I think. Um, so the other uh, pieces is uh, the logs are very useful. As I said, it exposes open metrics. You can scrape with Prometheus or any other uh, open metrics compatible format. And then, uh, and then you can also get traces off of Jaeger, of course. Um, so uh, I did want to spend a couple of minutes talking about metrics. And this is really how we move Jaeger from being a debugging tool to a monitoring tool, is really introducing and integrating metrics. Uh, so, most of you that have used an APM tool or, or other products that call themselves that, it's because they use traces and they also use metrics together. And this allows you to do things like monitoring, alerting, uh, capacity planning, other types of planning. When I deploy something new, how's it going to trend? What's going to happen in my environment? This is really the difference between uh, distributed tracing and monitoring tools like APM tools. Um, so we built uh, recently, uh, over the last uh, several months, a new capability we call ATM or aggregated trace metrics. And what this is, is there's a couple of pieces to it. One is in open telemetry. There's a, a, a span metrics processor and in this processor, when traces come in, the little diagram over to the right, traces come in, we then are able to look at those traces and derive metrics from the traces that then you, you send to a, any type of mat metrics backend. So whether you're using Prometheus or you're using a commercial tool, uh, anything in open telemetry can take those metrics from that trace processor. And then the traces continue on to your tracing backend. So the most common use case is, if I want to use all open source, is I'm going to send my metrics to Prometheus, and I'm going to send my traces to Jaeger, as an example. And, uh, and so this allows us to create all kinds of metrics off of the trace data. And I'll give you some examples and, and show you what that, what that does. So in the configuration for open telemetry, uh, this is an example config. We basically specify the histogram buckets that we want to create inside of Prometheus. And, uh, and we can define definitions. There's a bunch of examples in the code base. Um, the challenge is that it can create a lot of metrics depending on cardinality that you define. 
Uh, most commonly, we do status code based, so OK versus errors versus you know, redirects and other things like that. And then you have all the histogram buckets and Prometheus to do that. Um, down at the bottom is an example of how you would use that together. So using Jaeger and Prometheus together, this is basically a simple config of the pipeline. So how that's all set up in open telemetry and the code uh, in GitHub uh, is down at the bottom as well. It's part of uh, the collector. So once I have this data, I can do all kinds of cool things. Uh, here's a screenshot from Grafana showing the histogram buckets, the performance of all my traces. Um, and, uh, and we basically are calculating uh, the, requ the request per second or the request time, the latency, the errors. So it allows you to do a lot of different monitoring use cases and gives you real visibility into it. Um, we also added a view into Jaeger to query these metrics, and I'll show you that in a second. And that supports anything that's PromQL compatible. Um, so in Jaeger, whatever supports PromQL, you can point it there, and it will query those metrics and bring them into the UI, and I'll show you how that looks. The community can add other things, um, but we use M3DB at my organization and Prometheus, of course. Um, but it'll work fine with Cortex or Cortex-based systems, and of course, Thanos, Timescale, DB, whatever else is PromQL compatible. Uh, if you listened to the talk yesterday about compatibility, uh, it does matter whether things support PromQL the right way, so uh, naturally it, it does have to support uh, the right type of query language for it to work. Uh, but if someone wants to contribute a uh, you know, the ability for this to work with another, another metric system, that's fine. Uh, we'll definitely take any PRs in the project. And so we have a new, uh, this is actually a pending PR right now in Jaeger UI, is there's a new monitor tab in the UI, and this allows you to visualize this data. So, you know, latency, response time, error rates, the trending of those, um, and then some views. This is kind of the first step, I think, for Jaeger. Uh, obviously, it would be nice if we built alert manager visibility into Jaeger and really created more monitoring capabilities, really to move Jaeger from a, just a distributed tracing system into more of a, an operational monitoring tool and debugging tool. Um, so that's kind of... Uh, what we put together. Uh, definitely check out the docs. Uh, come visit us in Slack. And uh, we're always posting blogs. And if you have blogs or cool ideas that you want to post on our medium, just let us know. Uh, we're always looking for new content and ideas. Um, and uh, I think that is about it. I'm open for questions here. I'll repeat them for those of you that are listening online. Um, and I will also bring up the Slack and the online thing so that we can uh, make sure to include everyone. So if there's any questions, please uh, raise your hand. And sure. Uh, so you talked a lot about scalability of, of the Jaeger component. Uh, have you guys thought a lot about scalability of the uh, ATI Explorer yet? Or what's the story there? So the question was, I talked about the scalability of Jaeger. Is there any questions about the scalability of the ATM component that's inside OpenTelemetry? So one of the challenges with, with anything that's doing sampling or calculation is that you're going to get, it's, it's tricky because you're gonna be somewhat limited based on where the traces are going. So let's say you have 10 different collectors that are calculating metrics you're gonna have 10 different sets of metrics in Prometheus. But if you roll those up, so let's say I'm, I put the collector name in the metric path, I can then use it without the collector name and get the aggregate of that data. So the idea, and that's what's nice about Prometheus, is that you can aggregate data up a level from where you are. And if you decide that maybe I don't want a service I mean, maybe I don't want a microservice level view and I want to move a level up and look at a 
let's say, a pod level view or a Kubernetes you know, construct. You can use all different kinds of things in the metric path. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, in terms of scalability, we haven't really posted numbers on it, but we put a lot of metrics through it, like to the point where it got prohibitively expensive and we actually tuned it down. Uh, so it can definitely uh, create a lot of metrics. I'm not really worried about that. Um, but so hopefully that answers it. Um, I'm going to take one online, uh, which is can Jaeger work in a multi-cluster environment? Uh, so yeah, definitely. I mean, Jaeger is a microservices architecture. It's scalable. There's no real issues around that. If you have different storage backends, Jaeger doesn't work across separate clusters of Elasticsearch or Cassandra, for example. So you should scale those out, uh, which presents its own set of challenges because they're not the easiest things to scale out. But um, it does work well, uh, but it only supports basically one backend because of the way that the, that the product really works today or the project really works today. Um, over there. So I'm really excited to play around with the remote image. Really excited. Cool. And it sounds like if you want more data about all the things happening, then you can you can change that live. If there's anything to talk about, all things reverse, or if you want to narrow into a specific set of sessions or, or categorize traffic, something spans, you know, say you, you still have to do the old stuff, right? You still have to have So I'm going to try to rephrase the question and hopefully still get it. Uh, can you combine the remote sampling with other types of sampling? Is that kind of what you were getting at? Sort of, yeah. So you can get more specific based on something that's maybe uh, a, an attribute. An attribute? Sorry. Uh, yeah. So you can build sampling, and sorry, I'm sorry for people online. I'm trying to to rephrase it, but uh, you can you can combine different things in the sampling strategy. So you can use tags, you can use any type of part of the transaction itself to create a sampling strategy and do sampling and filtering. The challenge is with remote sampling is that. We haven't implemented all the way in OTEL, but it will go that way because there are customers, or sorry, they're not customers, there are users using the Jaeger libraries that support that, and they want that feature, including companies like Uber that created it, they, they need it, and they want to go to OTEL. So the only path they have forward is, is for that to happen. So it will be supported, you will be able to combine them together but it might give you weird results depending on what your goals are, um, combining remote sampling and centralized sampling. Uh, there was a, a working group in OTEL on sampling. It's uh, not that active anymore, but it's still an interesting topic for sure. Um, let me take one for online. Uh, so uh, a talk from the speaker uh, in the next session, Bartik, asks, uh, I wonder, does Prometheus, does Prometheus Aggregator for trace data in OTEL also populate exemplars? That's a really good question. The answer is no. Uh, I don't believe that there's good exemplar support in open telemetry yet, or maybe I just haven't seen it. Um, but if, uh, if that's there, uh, that would definitely be an option for enhancement. And exemplars, for those of you that are not familiar, a really powerful Prometheus feature, or open metrics feature, sorry, that allows uh, you to specify an example trace or log with a metric, and that allows you to move from a metric to an example of something that matches the metric. So it gives you a lot of context when you're troubleshooting to use exemplars. A really powerful thing, for sure. Um, I'll take another one for the live audience. I'm trying to go back and forth. Uh, sure. Oh. Sure. 
So the question is, does the operator work with service mesh like Istio? And in that case, do you not want to use the agent? Uh, so I've seen users use the built-in instrumentation for Istio. The challenge is, unless you instrument the code, the traces are very, they're not much better than logs, put it that way. And the issue is that the data being generated from service meshes, it's not gonna create an end-to-end -end transaction. You're just gonna see what the service mesh is doing. So you do need to instrument your code and if you and there's auto instrumentation if you don't want to make code changes for many languages, uh, and that's a good option. Uh, but you do have to instrument your code, and therefore you need a collector and and an agent in the case of Jaeger. Uh, so there's no way around it if you want meaningful traces, like the example that I that I showed you. Um, and I, we've I've had uh, end users at my company that have done that. And they say, why is the trace data so boring? It's like the same as a log message. And I said, well, you've got to instrument the code or we're just going to see what the service mesh is doing. Uh, so there's no shortcut, unfortunately, with service meshes and proxies and that kind of thing. So yeah, sure. Uh, I'll take one online. I'm just kind of picking the top voted one. Uh, oh, that was the top voted one. So the next one down. Uh, what's the expected memory or CPU footprint of running agents as sidecars? So the CPU is going to depend on the throughput of what you're sending through the agent, similar to the collector, but the footprint on the memory side should be very small. It's a Go binary. Uh, it doesn't do much. It's actually not a super complex uh, piece of technology at all. Similarly, if you decide to use open telemetry in that way, um, you can run a stripped down collector that doesn't have all the exporters and other things in there. There's a custom builder for open telemetry that lets you build your own distribution, essentially. It's really simple to use. Uh, and then you can create a, a really small collector, uh, and it shouldn't be using much in terms of uh, resources beyond what you're sending through it, which is obviously the, the processing power that's, that's really required there. Um, another question live, anyone? And I know I'm kind of running out of time, but all right, you can go again. <laughs> Sure. So the question was that if you're running it across multiple regions and you have multiple elastic search clusters, the thing I said it doesn't support, we don't really query across them. So you would have a single Jaeger UI instance for each region and you can't really search across them. So unfortunately, the answer today is we don't support it. Uh, it could definitely be built, but it would be pretty hard to federate those queries and make the UI work the right way. Uh, there are there is work going on in open search to 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 do a multi cluster query. It actually was just released recently in open search, and so you'll have some capabilities there. But it's uh, it's not something that's supported in the Jaeger UI. Uh, someone could contribute it, but I would guess that's a pretty big feature to build. Um, and I don't really have a good recommendation around it. My company, we do something differently where we allow you to create different sub-accounts that, that point to different clusters and indexes, and we can search across those, but we built a whole bunch of abstraction to make that happen. It's part of our platform, um, but it would be really hard to contribute that because it's it's, uh, it changes the way that all the back end works, basically. Um, but if you want to contribute something like that, then you know, by all means, I think it would be a cool feature. Uh, there may already be an open issue on it, but feel free to suggest it in the channel and 
if it's something that you're looking for. So, uh, I mean, I'll keep going till someone cuts me off. I'm over, though. Well, I think Bartek's talk is, uh, is starting. Actually, there's a little bit of time. I'll, I'll answer one more before I call it. Um, so here's a good one, because I like app decks. Uh, can Jaeger, sorry? OK, this is the last one. Uh, can Jaeger uh, plus ATM generate app deck scores? So app decks is an interesting way of trying to summarize user frustration or how well your application is performing. It's not something that's supported, but it could easily be added to the, to the, uh, to the metrics processor that's there, or you could actually make a different, uh, a different one to do that. So it's a good idea, I think, uh, but not something that's supported today. Um, and so I'm going to wrap it up, but thanks for attending, and it's good to see everyone again. Uh, and uh, come and join us in the Jaeger channel uh, and appreciate everyone showing up. Thanks again.